So we talked about before Tears of the Kingdom came out that developers were extremely impressed with the stuff they had seen in the trailers and in the gameplay demos. Like to the point that they were kind of mad at Nintendo, jokingly mad of course, that they are able to make a game like this because it is so impressive it makes their own work look like garbage. Well, it looks like now that the game is out, developers are talking again. And my lord, uh, while they're not angry anymore, there is a wow factor at play at the moment. And I don't know that they know how to react. So before we talk about this, let's first remind you that, hey guys, look, we're, we're on a road to 133,000 subscribers. And guys, I'm I'm somebody that's, you know, turning 37 this year, and I've had a number of jobs over the year, worked in water care, worked at uh, garbage companies, worked in construction, uh, a whole bunch of different things, and frankly, I always thought I was getting too old to keep chasing my dreams, and then, you know, over the last year or two, you know, things uh, seem to be looking up here as I, as I chase my dreams on YouTube. I got three kids, and honestly, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for everything, and I would appreciate if... This is the first time you've seen the channel. If you would subscribe to the channel and continue to help me chase my dreams and teach my children that you're never too old to reach for the stars. Also, folks, we do have a giveaway going on right now for like a replica Hylian shield and some other stuff. If you want to enter, you don't have to. Uh, it's for an event we have coming up next month. You can head down to the pinned comment or in the description. Click the link, and I wish everyone luck on that. So let's get into the story. And this first popped up in my feed from Forbes, okay? And I'm not gonna read the entire article from Forbes here because most of it is just conjecture and some opinion, but they bring up examples of actual game developers just being in shock. And first we're gonna start with Joss Scher. I'm sorry if, I, if I'm butchering your name, man. I definitely don't mean to do that. He is a director and stuff at Crop Circle Games. Uh, he's previously worked at Naughty Dog on, on games like Uncharted 4, Lost Legacy, The Last of Us 2 etc 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 and he said hey nintendo quick question regarding tears of the kingdom he says this back on may 15th how the f did you make this and then he followed this up with a reply please make a game with physics puzzles where players can build their own contraptions out of nearly every object available and make it work with little to no noticeable jank or breaking the game 99.9% .9 of developers cry nintendo rolls up sleeve i got you and then another developer responds in Corey Brotherson. Uh, he works at Tales Windrush, Clockwork Watch, Butterfly Books, and PlayStation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's worked at different studios over the years. And he says, I mean, seriously, I see some people going six years. Why did it take so long? Well, my brain simply collapses on itself that they managed to do the sheer number of crazy seemingly impossible stuff they casually do in this game and they keep it stable in just six years and then josh share responds to him and says it's the stability that is the miracle i keep expecting things to break but it all just works and you can just go on and on throughout uh, his Twitter thread and find tons of developers responding and just talking about how they just don't know how this is possible. Uh, they pulled this off on Nintendo Switch. We're struggling to pull off basic physics on a PlayStation 5. Yada, yada. Like, it's it, it's utterly impressive because what Nintendo has done here is taken the combination of an amazingly simplistic idea, glue things together, and combined it with one of the most complex physics engines that exist in AAA gaming with world interactions that just don't, don't even exist like in, in most games. Most AAA games don't have the level of world interactions, and it's understandable they can import those world interactions from, say, I don't know, Breath of the Wild, because they've already built that, but to make this work in that same engine or in the same physics is absolutely insane, and most developers don't really understand how they pulled it off. And you know, bringing up the six years thing, like they don't even know how you pulled that off in six years. This is something other studios might take a, a decade or more to do something like this. So it, it's very curious how impressive other game developers actually are when it comes to making this game. I mean, you even see, you know, like Modern Vintage Gamer, he. He uh, put out a video, and he's a game developer that a lot of us know because he appears on things like Spawncast. 
He does a podcast with Nate the Hate as well. And so he's pretty well known in the gaming community. He is a game developer that's done a lot of things. And here's what he had to say. Okay, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a masterpiece. And look, he didn't even beat the game. He didn't even get through the story. He's just looking at it as more from like a development standpoint. How do they get all these mechanics to just work? And not only just work, but somehow maintain anywhere near 30 FPS. And he talks about, you know, it, it's understandable that people get disappointed that it's not 60 FPS and yada, yada, yada. And some people find that to be unacceptable. Meanwhile, actual game developers playing the game were like, how the hell are you pulling this off without the game breaking and somehow maintaining anywhere near 30 FPS? It, it, it just doesn't make any sense and that's without considering how massive the world is how crazy the side quests can get the the the, the brilliance in some of the shrines like it's just like how is this even possible it, it is a masterpiece on multiple levels of game development and design and it's understandable why you know what there really is nothing like it we've seen a lot of games out there try to replicate and clone breath of the wild over the years but in the end, they never could quite pull it off. And you, you wonder, why couldn't they pull that off? And it, it, it's tough. The physics engine alone, Nintendo spent multiple years making that physics engine in Breath of the Wild. And there just aren't a lot of games like it. There are games that have ragdoll physics. That's not necessarily new. But having that physics work, interact with the grass and then interact with the trees and then have them where you light things on fire and the fire continues to spread in a more realistic and natural way. And just it, everything, the way that this game works is, is, is just how do they make that work? And a lot of game development studios haven't really figured that out to this day. And that was Breath of the Wild. And then they take what they've already built, that foundation, and then they stack these complex systems on top that just work. They don't break. It just, it, like, people keep trying to break the game, and they can't do it. Like, it, it's utterly insane what Nintendo pulled off. So what I have to say here is, first off, Nintendo has some absolutely brilliant teams, uh, some really, really good teams teams that they work with or work under them, right? The team that made, you know, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, great, brilliant team. The team they have work on things like Mario Odyssey, clearly a really good, brilliant team. The team that makes the Mario Karts and the Splatoons and the Animal Crossings, yes, very, very good development teams. But then you have the Zelda team, and the Zelda team is sort of a combination at this point. They have the core studio team, which does nothing at all but make Zelda games, right? They're already working on DLC and the next Zelda game, right? They, they That's just how it goes. Maybe they got like a, a couple days vacation to celebrate release so they get a four-day weekend or something. But in general, this is just their job, and they're just working on whatever's next. And that team is like, you know, 200, 300 people deep because they used to be two separate teams making handheld and home console. Now they're just one big team. So you have that Zelda team, right? And then you have Monolith Soft, who has multiple teams inside their studio now, including a team that so far for like a decade straight has done nothing but develop Zelda games alongside, you know, right alongside Nintendo's main Zelda team. So in the end, that team, that core team of the combination of um, a core group of, of, of developers from Monolith Soft and the Zelda team is just different, man. They're doing things that if other studios ask their developers to do, they might not actually be able to pull off and they'd be releasing a subpar broken experience. I mean, I, I don't want to rag on it, but if you look at Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you know, they were tasked with, hey, let's make an open world Pokemon game. And then they brought the game out and it, it it's broken everywhere. There's bugs everywhere. You know, just running around the overworld, they can't necessarily get right. Mounting up it has problems. They can't even maintain anywhere close to a stable 25 FPS, let alone 30. And here's Zelda just doing significantly more complex systems. And they're like, oh yeah, when you bust out, you know, your ultra hand here and there, it might drop down to 25 FPS, but immediately, immediately just snaps right back to 30. How the hell did they pull that off? How? And they're doing this on a Nintendo Switch. They don't have extra headroom of performance to, you know, let them make mistakes in the code work. They basically have to be 
perfectly optimized. And there's almost no game, even first party wise, that's ever perfectly optimized. So while you might be disappointed, it's still 30 FPS. You might be disappointed it doesn't hit native 1080p without FSR. What you need to understand is what Nintendo is doing. What that team has created is just something beyond most AAA studios development capabilities. And I've actually talked to some developers behind the scenes and they just, they're flabbergasted. There's a reason that Tears of the Kingdom has become an industry-wide event. There's a reason that Sony and other game developers and, and Xbox are, are all talking about Tears of the Kingdom right now because it is that damn impressive from multiple levels. Then you throw the fans on top. We're having a lot of fun with the story and our own gameplay experiences. It Guys, <laughs> There's a reason that this is the future of Zelda, everyone. This Zelda team could just do things nobody else can. It really, really makes me excited for whatever I crazy ideas Fujibayashi and the rest of the development team has for whatever the next game is going to be. Because this is the blueprint moving forward. We're going to keep getting open world Zelda games. I'm just more and more and more excited by what the hell they're going to pull off next. Because at this point, man, this I, I don't know if there's anything this Zelda team can't do. And now imagine they pull this off on the next system at 4K. 60 FP. I'm yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.